Well, good day, everyone. Um, I wanted to talk about a study that I, um, I worked on a few months ago, and I just could not go anywhere with it. It was um, about the, the concept was this idea of a woman in labor or she who is in labor. We see this concept of a woman or she who is in labor crying out in pain and giving birth. She gave birth. This is Revelation 12. We see the same type of thing in Isaiah 66 about this woman in labor. We see the same thing in Micah 5 about she who is in labor. Then we see something in Isaiah 26 where it makes, makes, it's, it's, it makes a reference to like a pregnant woman in labor. And she gives birth to the wind. It's a, it's a different woman than the, these, woman, these women up here. So I just had a little bit of a mini revelation with this who this woman is. And I've, I've suspected it for a while, but I couldn't put my finger on it. A lot of people think this woman is the church. I'd say it's not the church. It, it's just not the church. I, I feel like I've just nailed it who it is. And I'll tell you in a minute how, how I got there. But, okay, so Revelation 12. The Revelation 12 sign is about to occur on September 23rd, 2017. It was determined. It's a, it's a astrological formation of the sun, the moon, and the stars. Um, Scott, Scotty Clark found it, I don't know, back in 2011. He appears to be the first guy to find it. It's a monumental event. It's the first time in all of the Bible, in my, in my, in my understanding, where there is a prophetic event prophesied, and we actually know the date ahead of time, scientifically. You cannot point to anything else that I've ever seen in the Bible that points to that. Yet, it goes unmentioned in the churches across the world, and especially the United States, scientifically proven to be accurate and real. It's a one-day sign because the moon is only under her feet, Virgo, for one day, and then it, it goes on. Okay, so let's look at this for a minute. In Revelation 12, we see that the sign is described, and we know that the sign occurs on September 23. And it says here that she was pregnant and was crying out in birth pains and agony of giving birth. Now, does it say she actually gave birth? It says she's giving birth. But down here later it says she gave birth to a male child who was to rule the nations with a rod of iron, but her child was caught up, raptured, up to God and to his throne. Now we know that there's a group of, group of uh, 144,000 in Revelation 14 that are standing before the throne, and they're there. And maybe they got there from this rapture. So now we're in Revelation 12. There's a rapture, literally caught up rapture, up to God, to his throne. Revelation 14. And then the woman fled into the wilderness. Okay. So who was this woman? I think I know who the woman is, but let's continue on here for a minute. So Isaiah 66 has a little bit different take. It says before she was in labor. Now, is it the same she? We think it is. Before she was in labor, she gave birth. She, before her pain came, she delivered a son. We think that's the man-child. Who has heard of such a thing? Who has seen such a thing? Shall a land be born in a day? Shall a nation be brought forth in one moment? For as soon as Zion was in labor, Zion is the she, at least in Isaiah 66, she brought forth her children, who are the sons of Zion, who I can show are the tribe of Ephraim, and they're worth their weight in gold. Right here. The precious sons of Zion are worth their weight in gold. They are regarded as earthen pots at the work of the potter's hands. The Apostle Paul speaks about how God is the potter and the, the, the faithful believers are the clay in his hands who seem to be the precious sons of Zion. Now where do we get the sons of Zion from? We get it right here. For I have bent my bow as bent Judah as my bow, I have made Ephraim its arrows. I will stir up your sons, O Zion, against your sons of Greece. Okay, so Ephraim are the arrows that are in the quiver of the Lord. They are the sons of Zion. We get that connection there. And we hear that when she gives labor, when she when this Isaiah 66, her seven woman is in labor, she gives birth to the sons of Zion, her children. Okay, so is that the same child that's here it would seem to be the same because 
the sons of Zion are the 144,000 from Revelation 14, and here they are, they're being caught up and raptured in Revelation 12. So let's look at this before she was in labor. If we go and look at um, Stellarium, we see on September 23rd, Jupiter appears to be outside of the womb. If you want to say this is the womb, now this is speculation now. There's no rock solid determination here. This appears to be this womb, this four sided. Um, uh, this four-sided uh, polygram right here, polygon rather. Jupiter's outside of, but if we go back in time to September 9th at 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Jupiter is just crossing through. So could this be the before she was in labor, she gave birth? Could that be this before she was in labor, she gave birth? I don't know. Maybe. Okay. So let's talk about where we see this. Some other information about this. This, this woman who's in labor here and has these children of Zion. If you go to a apocalyptic book called Second Edras, or the fourth book of Ezra, we see this mysterious mother. We see a mother here. It's even capitalized here. Look what it says. Chapter 2, verse 15. Mother, Embrace your sons, bring them up with gladness, as does the dove. Establish their feet, because I have chosen you. So the mother, this mother, has sons. Who is this mother? Take again your full number, O Zion, and, con and conclude the list of your people who are clothed in white and who have fulfilled their Lord. The number of your children whom desire, whom you desired is full. You see, so there's a number, 144,000 in number, O Zion. So this mother is Zion. Zion is the mother. The city Zion is the mother. Kind of like the new Jerusalem is the bride. From Revelation 21. The number of your children whom you desired is full. Beseech the Lord power, the, the power of your people who have been called from the beginning made holy. So this group has been called from the beginning. Remember Paul tells us that... Uh, that these guys were co-heirs with Christ and before then they were called before the, the foundation of the world. I, Ezra, saw on Mount Zion a great multitude, which I could not number, as 144,000 probably. And they were all praising with songs or singing that new song. In their midst was a young man of great stature, taller than all the others, and on his head, and on the head of each of them he placed a crown. But he was more exalted than they, and I was held spellbound. I said, who are these? These are they who have put off mortal clothing and have put on the immortal. And they have confessed the name. Now they are being crowned and receive their palms. They're receiving their, their crowns, I guess. See, these palms would, would go on your head. Who is the man who places the crowns on their heads and palms in their hands? He is the Son of God whom, confessed, whom they confessed to the world. So here we learn that there's a group of people with a full number who are on Mount Zion with a great multitude and there's a young man in the center who could that young man be? could it be this guy? in the center? and they put on the immortal now where do we see that? where do we see the immortal? let me jump to the Bible real quick here Bear with me in one minute. You guys all know this verse. Crap. Sorry. Okay. I tell you this, brothers. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, this is Paul speaking. I tell you a mystery. We shall all not sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, the twinkling of an eye, the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead, in, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. So there's dead that are going to be raised imperishable. There's people like maybe we that are still alive. We shall be changed. For this perishable must put on imperishable. And the mortal body must put on immortality. So that appears to be some Paul wrote this, you know, in 50 AD. This thing was written, this second Edros. We don't know when. It could have been 200 BC. I don't know. But it speaks of this mother Mother, embrace your sons, bring them up in gladness. I will raise them up from I will raise them up from the dead places and bring them out of their tombs because I 
recognize my name. So the name is written on them. Do not fear, mother of sons, for I have chosen, I have chosen you, says the Lord. So this this mother who delivers these sons is Zion from here. This has to be Zion right there. Before she that's Zion. Your children are Zion. So to me, that's who it is. The question is, when? Now this caught up on my timeline, this caught up is at the end of the 40 days. So the, the catching away is not on September 23rd. At least these folks have to go and they have to. They're going to be harvest workers. They're 144,000. Okay, so I have a couple more verses to talk about this woman who's in labor. So Micah chapter 5, if you read Micah chapter 5, it speaks of um, a king that's going to come from the everlasting, who we know is Jesus. And it says this, it says, Therefore he, this king, from the everlasting, shall give them... I would say that's the Jews, up until the time when she who is in labor has given birth. That's the birth of the sons of Zion. Then the rest of his, Jesus' his brothers, doesn't say that in the, in the prophecy, but the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel. So, so the Jews, the tribe of Judah, shall return to the people of Israel. We know this, we see this happens in Ezekiel 37 with the two sticks. Okay, I already talked about Isaiah 26. This is where this, there's these people that are like a woman, pregnant woman, and they writhe and they were um, in pain, they were pregnant, and they gave birth to the wind. They had no deliverance in the earth. They had no fruit. Okay. Um, I've talked about Jeremiah 31 before. Jeremiah 31 is the first fruits reunion at the height of Mount Zion, and look who's there. Pregnant women, they, were, they weren't here to go through the three days of darkness. And she who was in labor, that seems to be this Mother Zion type thing. I even put it right here, the sons of Zion, birthed by Mother Zion, the new city Jerusalem. A great company shall return there to heavenly Mount Zion. With weeping they shall come, with pleas of mercy I will lead them back. And it says, and Ephraim is my firstborn. See, Ephraim's right there, 144,000, they're there too. Okay, guys. I've went through what I really wanted to go through. I wanted to talk about, the purpose of this video was to talk about the Revelation 12 sign just a little bit in this early birth that's going to occur. So the folks who may be part of this early birth were greatly anticipating when that might be. And I, You know, September 9th, I'm not saying that's the date. I don't know. I'm just saying if this appears to be the womb, then Jupiter is going to be birthed on that date. So with that, guys... Um, I don't have any more. Go and read this second um, Edros and read more about uh, Mount Zion and these sons, which is an incredible thing to consider. And uh, with that, you can download my study. And with that, have a good evening. And God bless you.